What do all of these sounds have in common? They've all been made using the same kick drum sample. How is this possible? Using granular synthesis, one of my favorite types of sound design, as it's just very cool sounding. It's quick to get results, and it's great for transforming a sample into something completely different. So in this movie, I'm gonna give you a quick intro to granular synthesis using Live 12's new and improved instrument, Granulator 3. So let's get into it. Firstly, just a bit about granular synthesis. Unlike traditional synth oscillators, which generate waveforms, a granular synthesizer uses a sample as its sound source. So it's a bit like wavetable synthesis. But instead of playing through a sample using a single playhead, if you like, granular synths use multiple streams called grains, which can be made to overlap one another and loop incredibly small portions of the sample to create really interesting sounds. So I've added granulator to the first MIDI track here, and you can see it looks much like a sampler in that it says drop sample here, because you need to import a sound into it to get going. So I'm gonna go to drums and then kick and just find one of my kick samples here, drop it in. And then when I play a MIDI note, so I'm gonna play C3, we don't actually hear anything. And you can see that's because the section that's playing right now is this highlighted region here, and it's after the sample. So I need to use the position dial here to bring it back until we're looping this particular section now. Now, it doesn't sound like you'd expect a looping sampler to sound at this point, and that's for a few reasons. Firstly, the mode here is set to classic rather than loop, which is more like a traditional sampler. We'll come onto this in a moment. The other main reason is this shape control here, and this sets the dynamic or the amplitude envelope of the, of the grain. What this means is how the volume of the grains behaves over time. And you can see this represented by the blue lines that are moving across this region because they're tallest in the middle and smallest at either end. So that means it's actually loudest in the middle here. So if we want to change that emphasis, we can use the shape dial here to shift it so it's uh, focused more on the initial part of the sample where the transient is. So we'll kind of bring back the transient of the kick. Next up, we have grain size, which is pretty easy to understand. It's literally just the duration of the grain, currently set to 250 milliseconds. So this is much like the loop length on a traditional sampler, only it goes a lot smaller on a granular synth. So as you can hear there, grain size is a really fun control to modulate in all sorts of different patches, especially for creating kind of cool and glitchy effects. Let's move on to the modes now though. So we're loop looping this small portion here, just over 19 milliseconds long. And if you wanna hear what a regular sampler would sound more like if you were looping this smaller portion of the sample, it's not a whole lot different. It's kind of an octave lower or at least has a, has a lower kind of timbre there. Um, it's not till you get to cloud though that you really hear the difference that a granular synthesizer can make. Now it's gonna sound really messy uh, with this kind of a sample. And if I zoom in, in fact, so you can see that a little more closely, you can see there's a lot more activity now. We've got more grains going on, uh, up to 20, in fact, I think. And you can see that they're moving in a more random fashion, some of them kind of jumping outside of the grain range here. It doesn't sound very good, but if I bring the grain size down, suddenly it sounds a lot more interesting. And certainly compared to classical loop mode, where we just get a very high pitch, single pitch, um, when I move the position around. If I set it to cloud instead, a lot more interesting. So let's move on to the last control here now then, and that's scan. Now this is a very cool control and where it properly starts to deviate away from sampling and into granular synthesis in that 
as you turn scan up, instead of it just looping our grain size here um, and staying in a fixed position, it will start to scan through the sample with a speed that increases as you turn the scan dial up. So set really low there, it's really, really nice at creating a proper kind of textural shifts um, and a change in timbre, you know, interesting, interesting kind of movement and stuff going on. Of course, if we go too high with that, um, we'll lose that effect and it will, it will turn more and more back into a kick drum. <laughs> So it's sounding really nice there as I move the frequency control of the filter up and down, which is just set to a default low pass right now. So it's cutting out the high frequencies. So to finish up this kind of patch, I think I'm just going to show you how to modulate this control. Um, first though, let's just bring the filter frequency back up and add some spread so you can hear that. It's kind of like unison voicing. Just going to bring down the level a touch. And just like unison voicing, going too far adds way too much detuning. It starts to sound really out of tune, which might be good for wonkier sounds, but around there sounds quite nice. So to now add a little bit of modulation of this frequency control, I can go over to the kind of regular synth controls here with our envelopes and LFOs and filter and so on. So we've got the amplitude envelope at the beginning here, and then we've got envelope two alongside. So every time you click on these controls, you may have noticed the uh, settings above changing. So if we click on filter frequency, we can now turn up the envelope to amount to then use this curve here to modulate the frequency control in whatever way we like. So if I turn it down and we just want to have it kind of coming up and then down, then we've already got the attack here. So I'll just bring down the sustain and then have a decay, which is kind of similar couple of seconds, two or three seconds, something like that. Let's make it a little bit quicker, actually. So I've done a little bit of fine tuning now of the envelopes. I've also added a little bit of envelope one modulation to this filter frequency control as well, just to slightly brighten the, the transient. So when I just, when I play a note, And you can probably hear I've added some effects via this uh, this rack I've just created. And yeah, it's sounding a little bit fuller now. Um, I also quite like the effect of adding some LFO modulation to the filter control as well. So and there's a fun option here. You can actually use a mod wheel to bring this up and down. So you turn it up to max here and then the mod wheel on a connected keyboard or the first dial on this CC control device, which is a new device in Live 12, uh, can be used to bring the LFO in and out. So yeah, it's coming along nicely and I quite like the effect of playing notes up an octave uh, just with a shorter duration. So yeah, quite a few different options for the direction I might like to go in with this particular patch. If you want to learn more about effects processing, by the way, for instance, the sounds we heard at the beginning where I'm using granulator to transform the exact same kick sample into, into this bass sound processed with these effects. And similarly, the um, kind of ravey wonky lead. without the effects. So hugely important, particularly combining things like overdrive and multiband distortion 
um, which you can now do with Live 12's Raw Effect. So if you want to learn more about this, then keep an eye on the channel, hit subscribe, make sure you don't miss any videos, and there'll be a feature on this in the next week or so. So back to granulator then, I want to show you one other example that is to do with grain size. So I'm going to search for a sample in the atmosphere type. These can be good because they're really long samples with loads of stuff going on. So it gives you tons of stuff to play with. So I'm just going to set the position sort of a bit earlier on here. So it's not in quite such a loud section. I'm going to bring the grain size down for now. Maybe just add a little bit of scan. So one thing just to say about designing patches with a small grain size. Uh, one of the advantages is if, say, I want to turn this into kind of a plucky sound, so I can go to the envelopes here, bring down sustain, and give it a kind of short-ish decay. Then the advantages to this are that, you know, I can now play with different parts of the waveform, and I can also drop in other samples. And you'll notice they're all in the same uh, key. They're all playing the same note. So if I... Let's um, go back to this one. Actually, I'll play an octave up. Each one I'm dropping in there is playing exactly the same chord. I'm just playing C, E, G, so just a C major chord. So that's an advantage to it, in that uh, the tuning is always going to be the same. The downside is that um, the notes I'm playing aren't necessarily the ones that we're actually hearing, because the pitch is determined by the grain size. So at the moment it's playing this chord, if I bring it up a little bit, it's going to get higher. So at these lower sizes, um, you do need to consider what notes you're actually playing, and uh, just to show you a way, for example, of tuning it, an easy way in live would be to go to Audio Effects Utility and just grab Tuner. So I can see playing the C here, we're getting a D sharp. So I need to come down by three. And there we go. And if it's slightly off the center, you can use the D tune here to make sure that it's, it's in tune. So a little tip there for making sure things are tuned correctly. So that was an example of how tuning works at the smaller grain sizes. But if we go up from there, what will happen is we'll get a more kind of obvious sense of looping initially, and the, the kind of overall pitch will go away. And then going up from there, we'll hear the original sample kind of come through more and more. So once the, once the, the loop length is large enough, the pitch of the original sample will, will basically come through and take over. So what this means is, you know, even if we change uh, the position of a particular sample, if we've got a complex sample with various chords and different pitches in, um, the pitch is going to change as you move around within that sample, but it's certainly going to change for the most part from um, different sample to sample here. That's nice. Anyway, before we get carried away, uh, I think you get the point. At these smaller grain sizes, the pitch is determined by the actual grain size itself. So it won't change when you change the position or the sample that you're using. But with these larger grain sizes, suddenly the pitch of the actual sample comes through. So when I play a C here, I'll only actually hear a C if the original sample is in, is in C which in this case it is, so we're fine. But with a bit more granulator know-how, you can turn that last sample we were listening to there into something a lot more exciting 
and evolving um, with all sorts of different modulation and variation going on. But I'm going to save those techniques for the Producer Tech membership community as I'll be doing a set of bonus tutorials on granular synthesis and sound design for them. So if you want to get involved, then come and sign up to the Produce Tech membership, which gives you full access to all of our courses, as well as all of the bonus weekly content and lots more. I hope you enjoyed this demo of Granulator and now feel more in the know when it comes to granular synthesis in general. If you want to get hold of Granulator 3, then you can do that if you're an Ableton Live Suite user when version 12 comes out next year. If you own Phaseplant, then this is a great alternative third-party option. It's a really amazing synth, and the granular generator is just one small part of it, but a very powerful one. And you can find a great deal on that on the Plugin Boutique website right now, so check that out if you don't own it yet. I'll be doing some more Phaseplant features over the coming months, as well as some preset giveaways over the festive season, so keep an eye out for those. In the meantime, though, happy sound designing, and I'll see you next time.